welcome back. Let's continue uh, our discussion. Now we are going to look at um, the next point on the list, which is the social services, then GP, then the uh, next point. Now, what is the role of a social service? I uh, just want us to look very carefully at uh, our systems. I don't know about other nations because I'm conscious of the fact that other candidates who are learning this uh, course, education and training, are resident in other countries. And we go to deliver lessons, they are face to face. So you have to refer to your own system how this works. In the United Kingdom, uh, social services are the second largest advice, um, uh, a bit of pardon, social services are the second largest service within local government. Its core function is protecting the vulnerable, supporting independent living, and providing improved life outcomes for children and young people. That is a core function of the social service. Now, how does this affect you as a profession teacher? As a profession teacher, I find that some of the students you have in the classroom probably are under this supervision. Some of them not even connected. So lives of people change periodically or they can change at any time so you as a professional you must be aware of the role of the social services and when you are supposed to refer a matter through your line manager to such bodies and what they do at this point in time what i want you to learn is what are the core values of the social services based on what i've mentioned we say they are there to protect the vulnerable, supporting independent living, and providing improved life outcomes for children and young people. And I presume that when you are in a teaching environment, there are so many things you'll be noticing. Some of the things may not actually have taken place in the classroom. Maybe by way of disclosure, a candidate in the classroom mentioned something to you. At that point, when information becomes available to you, you become responsible because you know it. You cannot keep quiet. You must inform the social service through your line manager. How does this work? You must follow the policy of your learning institution. That's very critical, how these things can be escalated. Now, the important thing is that, is that you must know that local authorities have a statutory responsibility for planning and commissioning social services as well as a duty to safeguard individuals through a range of partnerships. In other words, this system, the way it works, there are certain partnerships which government has commissioned to be able to do certain pieces of work for them for the, to achieve what they call the protecting the vulnerable, supporting independent living and providing improved life outcomes for children and young people. So teachers, you must know this information and the way social services operate in the United Kingdom. If there are other similarities in your country of origin where you are learning right now as a distant learner and residential uh, uh, learner, you can now look at what sort of services these apply to your own country. So what's important now to, to note is that once you have this information, you become a holistic tutor not only delivering the domain knowledge that you know, it could be chemistry, physics, biology, or health and social care, but you also look at the welfare of the student by knowing the referral points. Because at the end of the day, every individual has equal opportunities. Equality and diversity tells us that everyone is considered equal and must be supported equally. Therefore, these services must be able to help the candidate to find that their place in the learning environment is safe and secure. So, teacher, you must know about this information. Now, before I proceed, one question I'll ask you is, uh, in your local area, do you know which partnership does with what? Or does your line manager call you out for a CPD programs where you can learn about social services? put these things in, uh, in perspective. For those who are already uh, teaching or working in the learning environment, ask these questions. If you're not yet in the environment, begin to look for this information so that by the time you finish this course, you'll be able to know what's available in your local area. The other point I want us to look at is the um, GP. 
a GP, many of you have subscribed to a GP, almost everyone in the UK has a GP. They look after the health of people in their local community and deal with a whole range of health problems. They also provide health education, offer advice on smoking and that, run clinics, they give vaccinations and carry out a sample surgical operations and more. Now, if you are teaching, students may fall ill, but you are not supposed to be able to treat them. Through your line manager, some students, you must know where the GPs are, according to the policy of your school, so that these, things, these people are informed with the consent of the parents. If they are below the age of 18, you must know or on safeguarding and many other things. But the key point is that you must know the points of referral. If you are teaching adults, adults, adults above the age of 18, or they are 21, etc., and above, these people, they must know all about their own GPs. But you, as a professional in your own domain, you must know the referral points and when to escalate the matter. And again, I emphasize through your line manager. Your line manager must know about this or according to your policy. Now, um, one thing you should know about GPs is that they should work in practices as part of a team, which includes nurses, healthcare assistants, practic practice managers, receptionists, and other staff. It is this kind of understanding that a professional teacher must also have. Why? Because it's not always that you will be able to interact with the GP directly. Maybe one of these people will receive information and they escalate and they do what they do best. But the key point is that you must always know who to refer to and what they do. In continuing, I would like to look at the following point, which is the G uh, citizen's advice. Citizens' advice. And uh, before I, pr I proceed, uh, let, let me just um, phrase myself a bit here. The citizens' advice, before I proceed, let me just get, let me make sure that I've got the right thing in place here. Yes. Uh, I'll take myself a little bit out of the way there. I think we're blocking something. The citizens' advice, citizens' advice bureau. What are their roles? The Citizens Advice Bureau, what are their roles? Okay. This thing is. How come it's not working as I want it to work? Sorry. Yes, okay, let's proceed. Yes, let's proceed with the citizens. I'll look at the citizens' advice. What does it entail? 
The citizen advice um, in the UK, it's been in existence since 1907. Okay, if I have the citizen's advice there, okay, which we mentioned that it's been in existence since 1907. Um, what is the purpose of the citizen advice and why you should know about it? Uh, it's na a network of around 316 independent charities. These are independent charities. Independent what? Independent charities. Uh, I'll take a color. The independent, I beg your pardon, it's not looking at as pretty. Just get rid of that. Yes. These are charities. Yeah, it's a charity, and the main roles for each of these charity in the network, they are about, we are told they are about, how many, 316, 316, they are about 316, so um, the, 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 let me see, they are about, 316 in number. Okay? About 316 in number. So the uh, main role is to provide advice uh, to the people who are facing problems and to improve policies and principles that affect people's lives. So they take it on board. And one key area that you know, they are what? Free. These are free services to, to, to the public. But of course, they're, they're funded elsewhere. Um, and uh, you, you as uh, a teacher, because you're always interacting with your students, it's important to know the areas where you can actually say, look, oh, for what you're going through, I think it's better you go and this is an advice uh, for, for this and the information will be available within the college because a, a learning environment with respect to the overall primary learning outcomes based on the coursework must also provide avenues to safeguard, support, encourage. So, so these ones, the crew they give you free advice. It could be legal to other. So for, for a candidate who is on your course, this is very important, paramount, if at all there's need. And most places in the UK, these are They've got a location, a physical location office somewhere in the local authority. You as a teacher must know where these things are. And it, as a matter of fact, it uh, probably would be in your park somewhere in, in the college or school. Uh, because these points of referral are very important to the, uh, uh, your profession. There is also a very important aspect that we look at here, which is the probation services. Okay? Ex excuse me. What is the role of the probation service? But before we go to there, let me just clear the board and look at that important aspect and why it's important for you as a teacher to know about this and to get involved. Okay. Now, having looked at all these important parameters, I want us now to consider a number of things.
probation services. The probation service, this is National Probation Service for England and Wales, which is a statutory criminal justice service. And uh, you will discover that the <coughs> you discover that the, uh, there is a role it plays. A role it plays, I beg your pardon there, the, the role it plays in you and in your environment as a professional teacher is very important as you will discover we're talking about the probation service. If I just put myself in that corner so that we can interact properly. So if you look at uh, the, uh, the actual uh, his support program we're looking at, it's uh, men responsible for the supervision of offenders who've been released in the community. Now, a community can be a school like yours or a college or a, uh, a learning environment where you are teaching as a professional tutor. So some people who have had a criminal uh, offences doesn't mean they cannot be released in the community to start learning after they've been cleared or they've served their sentence. Now these ones are actually supervised by what we call the National Probation Service. Now when they do come into the community, they're still under the supervision. Some of them are under the supervision and they could find themselves in a classroom. And you'll be informed by your line manager if you have such kind of people in your in, in your class and how you to treat them. It's in this uh, uh, sort of environment where you will have the knowledge when certain matters has, have to be referred to the probation officer who is looking after that gen gentleman or woman. And your policy in the learning environment will stipulate how this thing is done. So as a teacher you are equipped with information that is outside your domain knowledge like chemistry or physics or your pedagogy in terms of the way you deliver. So this is why when you have a teaching qualification, there is a lot of things that you begin to know that you never knew about. So teaching isn't a, in solitude. You just go there and deliver. There are other things you've got to be conscious of and also know your responsibilities. So if you knew about the National uh, Probation Services and that some people who are being supervised are in your classroom, you would know what to do in the case of an incident. You would take care. Maybe, I don't know if this could happen, it could be that there is some people whom you are teaching and you'll be required to write a report on, on their conduct on a day to day because they are being supervised, they are being watched on their performance in the community. All these things come into play. As a qualified teacher, when you encounter such kind of thing, you know that you've been trained through your teaching qualification. This is why it's critical for anybody who is going into training to have a qualification because there's so much information that you gather and become an expert in your delivery of a lesson because it's not a holistic. Imagine somebody who's been supervised uh, under this uh, probation service is in your classroom. When you're sitting down to prepare a lesson, your differentiation becomes vital and the way you use examples becomes vital because you don't want to to provoke the emotions or to disturb the emotions of somebody who is healing from a past criminal life to being brought into a community and become a member of a community and become productive so in your differentiation as you're setting questions giving examples you must be very careful of what you say and what you do not say because these things play so much on the students. It is this uh, factor which is why we choose to follow the syllabus that the awarding bodies give us because they are looking at what knowledge that a candidate on the teaching qualification must have in order to become a better teacher. Because a teacher is building up people who become employees and eventually becomes employers or business owners, as the case might be. Remember our last lesson, one of the last before this one, we talked about things that a candidate would be linked to, a community, employers, and they can be business owners. So as you're teaching, 
you are building up such kind of people to be released in the community. So National Probation Service comes into play. And just for the, um, some um, information, um, I think I say, I say, it, is, it was uh, the National Probation Service in England and Wales was established. I think it's been in existence since 1907. Okay, but it says um, the act was a sort of done in April 2001. It's, uh, it was established in its current form, which is the National Probation Service, Probation Service by the Criminal Justice and Court Services Act in April 2001. But has existed since 1907 as a set of area based on services interacting at arm's length with central central government. Okay, I um, let me just counter check with the citizens' advice bureau. I think I, I mixed up some points there. I retract my statement. The 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 citizens' advice uh, organisations emerged in the 1930s. I did mention something that they existed in 1907. No, no, that was the National Probation Service, but. Citizens Advice Bureau emerged in the 1930s. Uh, um, uh, so I want to make that correction in case I don't cut it out in the editorial. So you see that as a profession teacher, there's a lot of information that you need to gather and learn. Now, finally and lastly, and not the least, but actually in terms of your domain knowledge and the way you deliver it, that is a very important component because you cannot teach your candidates without a guideline, which comes from an awarding organization, which we call examples. So what is the role of an awarding organization? Okay, in England and Wales, and also I presume many parts of the world, there are education councils that validate learning and they produce syllabuses. And they probably uh, subcontract or offer a contract to, uh, to uh, bodies which are called as examination councils. Those that give you syllabuses and you're supposed to deliver according to your syllabus, they give you a date by which examinations will be set and for if it's coursework, by which date it should be submitted, handed in and sent over for authentication. And this falls under the regulated course materials or regulated courses. Now we say the awarding organizations what do they do? They authorize and award learner qualifications, in particular in the UK, and these qualifications are actually delivered by learning institutions. How does it work? Okay. Before I go to that, so you as a teacher, you must know at what point you have to refer all your work to the awarding organization according to your policy. At what point in time should you now take the learner's work and take it to the awarding organization. For what reason? To validate their results or validate your marking and thereby making a way for the candidate to be awarded a certificate or as the case might be. So the process begins with you in the classroom. By number one, remember, deliver a lesson according to the content of the syllabus. Where does the syllabus come from? It's from awarding organizations. Now, how is this relationship a uh, sort of uh, perceived? I, I want to just uh, pause a little bit there and draw up a diagram for you so you can see. Okay. We're going to call this the awarding the awarding organization, okay? The awarding what? Organization. The awarding organization at the top here, okay? Then just above there, it is government, okay? Government, um, 
I just beg your pardon. Let me let me just get rid of that bit. I'll, I'll do the other way around. We have um okay, yes. We have here, let me see, government. In this country, we've got what is called OFCO. Okay? OFCO, so the government is there. They register and authorize the awarding organizations. Okay? Awarding organizations, they register colleges, okay, colleges, uh, schools, okay, schools, etc. Okay. These can be in two forms. This could be public, which is government funded, public or private. Okay, this is the arrangement. You must understand this as a teacher. So then these they reach to the community and the community here is basically the students we teach them okay can you see government you see government here authorize awarding organizations who authorize or accredited colleges, schools, etc. They could be public or private schools and they teach the communities. This is the arrangement. So when you are in the classroom as a as a as a when in the classroom as a teacher, this must be at the back of your mind. You must be aware of this uh, 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 situation for one major reason. That is to say, for one major reason, you must be aware of this arrangement, for one major reason, how information flows between yourself, the students, and the awarding organizations, and where they get their authority from. This is for regulated qualifications. So as a tutor, with this in mind, <coughs> Glad to conclude that we have identified and discussed uh, the referral points and a bit more detail has been given to you. So in short, we have go gone through the probation services, social services, uh, citizens' advice, we have looked at the GP, we have also looked at the security department, we have looked at program, um, at uh, pastoral care, we have also looked at the, uh, <coughs> I beg your pardon, the line manager and awarding organizations. So with this background, you should be able to identify the federal point and describe some of their roles and purposes. And for you as a tutor on the course, I believe that with this, you are now ready to start uh, planning lessons and going through the cycle of lessons. Now, before I go, let me just uh, recap once again and bring the list back up on the screen. So, with um, the understanding of a line manager, teaching support staff, security department, pastoral care, social services, GP, citizens advice bureau, probation service, and awarding organizations, you as a tutor, you are now well grounded in demonstrating or identifying re points of referral. Thank you very much, and I'm glad. Let me bring myself up.
Thank you. I beg your pardon. Thank you very much, and I'm glad to say that uh, I've enjoyed delivering this section of uh, the lesson. I'll see you in the next part. And make sure you always meet your deadline. Signing off, still with you online, Dr. John Lukomona. Bye.